I don't think Gabby Hanna likes being disliked. There's a lot of ways she could have dealt with that situation, but again, she kind of went on defensive. She was lucky none of this came out at the time. The only reason people ended up talking about this situation is because Gabby brought it up herself. It became apparent that people were not allowed to say their experience with her if it was negative out loud. And she felt like the victim when, again, she was the aggressor in this situation. I guess, so, today's video, I thought it'd be interesting because I got recommended one of the Gabby Hanna commentary on her docu-series, what was it, last year? No, it was a couple of years ago now, actually. Wow, how time flies. I rewatched some commentary channels, making their opinions known about that documentary series. Documentary series. You know, completely unbiased from the person who was making the videos, but okay. I thought it'd be interesting just to go back through some of Gabby's dramas in hindsight over, I don't even know, like four or five, even maybe even six or seven years. Um, I don't know how far back some of these go. And I guarantee I'm going to miss some because Gabby has been in a lot of drama. It's hard to keep up. I'm pretty sure some of this might be in the wrong order as well. So some of the earlier ones I'm going to talk about, I don't recall when they ha where and when they happened, like in which order. So I'm just going to try and talk about as many as I remember and we'll kind of go from there. One of the reasons I want to do this is because Gabby has come out in a video, I don't know whether it was earlier this year or maybe it was late last year, but she came out in a video and it was quite vulnerable and she said that, I think it was on the TikTok or something, because she said she doesn't feel like she has any friends. Here's the... Here's the thing that's super hard to say out loud, and I'm gonna say it out loud to a bunch of strangers. Man, I wish I had some friends. <sighs> Why I don't have friends? It's just hard to like not be mad at myself because I feel like it's like, my man, I just like dealt with so much of my life so poorly because like I just didn't know how. And like I've gotten to a point like a while ago where I started forgiving just like everybody for like everything right but i'm still having so much trouble forgiving myself i just wish gabby would introvertly look at her own flaws because then she could be such a better person let's see if you agree with me okay so if you don't know gabby hannah she is a viner turned story timer turned musical artist. One of the first pieces of drama I was aware of, I feel like I knew about the Kenza Cosmetics scandal before this one, but I'm just going to talk about this one because when she was talking about a docu-series, she talked about this one first. When Gabby was at a party, her and another YouTuber, Rice Gum, I don't know, had like beef or something. It was all very, you know, stirred up for YouTube drama and clicks and all that sort of stuff. Everyone used to be doing diss tracks around this time and it was just really popular, so People would almost create beef, create these sort of online disagreements just so they could make diss tracks. Gabby, I think, wanted to do some sort of diss track against Rice Gum and Rice Gum to do one to her and it'll bring more clicks and views in for both of them, right? Considering they were both at a party, they'd both been drinking, Gabby used the opportunity to try and talk to Rice Gum. Rice Gum is here and I know that I, like, I want to I wanna challenge him to a battle, but I know he won't do it and it's Alex's birthday so I want to like ruin the party, you know what I mean? Now, with all due respect, if someone's just at a party trying to have a good time, maybe don't bring up work, because it is literally work for them. Maybe don't bring up work, maybe just try and not create drama and shit while you're at a party. Not that I'm blaming Gabby for what Rice Gum did, I'm just saying that instigating something like this, it wasn't the right time or place. When people have been drinking, they tend to react in very unpredictable ways, and unfortunately Rice Gum reacted to Gabby because Gabby was filming or she was on live on her phone or something I don't know but she had a phone in her hand and was filming both of them and Rice Gum grabbed her phone and smashed it. Okay so update sorry if it looks like I'm crying um Rice Gum didn't think that joke was very funny and he hit me in the middle of a party and shattered my phone I can show you that in a sec. I'm standing out on the balcony so that it doesn't like make a scene but, like 
he literally like everyone was like did he hit you and i was like yeah he did and my phone is broken the screen is broken the back camera is broken so i need to get a new phone um Here is my pop socket in my hand um, that fell off when he shattered my phone. It's broken. Sad. I just made this. And let's say, because I don't have any photo evidence, just like eyewitnesses, of him grabbing me, holding me down, and hitting me, and, like, twisting my arm, he still shattered my phone. Even if I was making up everything about him hitting me and twisting my arm, like, all of that, even if that was all a lie, even if he didn't touch me, he damaged my property because of what? He threw my phone enough to break the case. I'll show you when I get home. The back camera shattered. The pop socket's in my pocket, like, broken in half. The plastic shattered, like... Now, 100%, that is not okay. The problem was that Gabby had already, from what I remember, and like I said, this is why I think it might have been after the Kenza Cosmetics drama, I think this is why some people were thinking that Gabby was, was worse than it was, because she had cried wolf before. She's a story timer, right? She's always, these kind of story timers are very overdramatic. So I think a lot of people assumed that she was being overdramatic. I think there was also talk of the fact that he may have pushed her or like punched her in the knee or something, I can't remember but I remember her saying something about him assaulting her and the way that people ran to Ricegum's defense was wrong a hundred percent or ignore it but I have never come to the in internet to like try to start a public conference come on in Fred first time I ever started hearing it was the rice gum situation that situation like wasn't Dude, I was fucking physically assaulted and my property was broken. So when she brought that up in the docuseries later down the line, everyone agreed with her that she was treated poorly. And I think that, like I say, it's partly because she was a story time. But also this was, I feel like this might have been before the Me Too movement. So women were not believed at all around this time of men assaulting them, men consistently just sexualizing them. That was just such a normal behavior, whereas now it's seen as why the fuck are you talking to someone like that? Why the fuck are you putting hands on someone? Why the fuck are you even touching someone's phone? It's not your property. Like, people recognize that now. I mean, it's sad that this even ha had to happen 5, 10, 20 years just in general for it to be normalized that this behavior isn't okay. The only thing I will say, and this is just try and be unbiased, is that there was a couple of things that Gabby said from memory. Again, I, this is a long time ago. Don't shoot me if I'm wrong. But there was a couple of bits of information that she said that weren't accurate, at least from what I remember at the time. And I think that's why people assumed that she was being overdramatic because there was a couple of things that she said that didn't line up. So they had to assume maybe she wasn't telling the truth about all of it then, or even more of it at least. And from a lot of the other situations that I'm gonna go through, it is a pattern. I think if something like that happened now, it would be hard to believe Gabby in everything she would say of a story because she has lied so many times. The way she sees the world and other people and her, her interactions with other people is very, very different to the way that everyone else sees her reactions with them. So I'm just putting a pin in that. Not saying she was in the wrong for that situation, I'm just saying that, again, in hindsight, Inside, with everything we now know and we've seen, I'm not saying the whole story was a lie, I'm saying if the inaccuracies that I semi-remember were possible lies, it fits a pattern. The next one that I'm aware of, anyway, like I said, I think this one might have actually come before, Kenza Cosmetics scandal. So, if you don't know, Gabby promoted a brush company that was a scam. Gabby, to this day, does not think it's a scam. She thinks it was just marketing. Well, the, the brushes were advertised as luxury brushes. It's marketing, guys. What it was, was it was a website that you go on, all the brushes say they're free, you pay nothing for them except for shipping, which was $10. But the brush quality was meant to be, it was being advertised as like $80 worth of brushes. I'm sorry, but this company, Kenta Cosmetics, is giving away their makeup brushes for free from 2018 while supplies last, and I figured, it's free stuff, why wouldn't I tell you guys? All you have to pay is shipping. Here's some of the 2018 styles that they're trying to get rid of to make room for 2019. I love these ones, these marble ones. <gasps> Cute, with that little fluffy brushes. So, to her underage audience, very easily 
to manipulate and trust someone they look up to. She promoted these brushes and when she was called out for it, she turned around and said that she didn't appreciate that she was being called out by drama channels. She didn't appreciate that no one came to her in private about it, even though her fans did go to her in private about it saying, the brushes were actually really shit quality. Some people never received their brushes, so they were literally scammed out of money. And when she came to YouTube for her apology, it wasn't really an apology, it was an explanation as to why she took that deal. Uh, I don't see that as a po an apology whatsoever, because one of the statements she made, which has followed her for the rest of her career, is manage your expectations. <laughs> manage your expectations a little bit because she was trying to say well of course they weren't going to be expensive brushes because you were only paying ten dollars of shipping but the point of gabby was told to say was that they were good quality brushes but they were old stock and therefore they were just trying to move stock so her again underage audience was assuming okay this is influencer i trust i'm gonna get really good quality brushes but that's not actually what they were ever getting so it was a scam that is the literal definition of a fucking scam. You're sold something at a quality that is not what you actually buy. That's like being told this is a real Chanel bag, for example, and given a fake. And then being told, manage your expectations. People were pissed off at Gabby. They were pissed off the fact that she made this bad business deal. But they were more pissed off about the fact that she basically blamed her audience for believing her, which was incredibly scummy. To this day, she at the very least made that docu-series and she was again trying to explain why. She just said, oh, it was just a bad business still. I made a bad business choice, dude, for real. Like I was doing everything myself, it was an oversight. That was exactly everyone's point. All she had to turn around and say was, I made a bad business decision and I'm sorry that you guys were affected by that. That is all she had to fucking say. But instead she said, I just wanted to do it for the money. I would have sold you all these other really shitty fucking brands and products, but I didn't because I care about you. Even though she still did a shitty brand deal. Like, so she was trying to make out that she did all this research for brands, but one slipped through the cracks. And if that's the case, just apologize for it then. But she was incapable of taking ownership of the fact that she made a fucking mistake. And that is why everyone was angry at her for it. And it's really sad that she's 30 odd years old and still cannot see that that is what everyone had the problem with. She's human. She can make mistakes. Everyone makes fucking mistakes. It's how you deal with the mistakes that show the character of the person. So I'm not going to stay on this one very long. I wanted to just quickly cover that, again, I don't know where all these kind of went. But when Gabby went on a YouTube channel and it was like quite a few of the artists sort of talk through their lyrics and sing through the lyrics as they're talking through it and explaining why they wrote the song the way they did or what the song's about, etc. When Gabby was singing, because at the time at least, I don't know what she's like now, but at the time, Gabby had not had a lot of live singing training. I'm going to try and put this in the kindest way I can because I love to sing. I would never sing live because Jesus Christ, pressure. I've not had any training whatsoever. I don't know how much training Gabby may have had, but at the very least, she definitely, at the time, needed a lot of, I feel like, one-to-one -one training on how to sing live because there is quite a lot of videos out there where her singing live is quite weak. Yeah. And that's not just her. I've heard Selena Gomez sing live on like one of these music performances. And I love Selena Gomez. I think she's a lovely, lovely woman. And apparently this is a lot down to nerves. But I don't think sometimes she has the best singing voice for live performances. And... Gabby may be very good in the studio, but when she sings live, it's kind of hit or miss. In this instance, she blew out the microphone, and so it sounded off key or off pitch or whatever. What if I'm the monster that's been here all along? And it was memed. Gabby wanted to take control of that situation and laugh with the audience about it. I love the fact that everybody's making my mouth really big because I like screamed it in that. She really went hard about it to the point where it was like we weren't laughing with her because it was cringeworthy the way she was going about it. I think again her being memed in that way really affected her 
again, this this will come out a lot more later, but I'm just going to say this to do with this situation, and hopefully you'll recognise that this is a consistent pattern. I don't think Gabby Hanna likes being disliked by anybody. I don't think she likes anything negative said about her. I don't think she likes anybody disliking her as a person. I think she wants to be loved, adored, or appreciated by every single person that she knows or meets. That's an intense statement, but you'll see what I mean as we carry on. The next two are very sensitive topics. Okay, so we're going to talk about Trisha Paytas. Now, there's been a lot of drama around Gabby and Trisha Paytas. I don't remember fucking any of it bar one. Uh, firstly, because Gabby brought it up in her docuseries. And secondly, because it was one of the biggest dramas they've both had with each other. And it's one of the things that Trisha has said that is the biggest problem she has ever had with Gabby. Gabby Hanna turned round to the person Trisha was dating at the time, who was like best friends with David Dobrik, who was at the time one of the most popular YouTubers on YouTube. And Gabby turned round to Jason, the person dating Trisha, in front of David, who had nothing to do with this conversation whatsoever, and turned around and said, basically, be careful and get checked because I think Trisha has herpes. David did not need to be in that conversation whatsoever. Gabby could have just pulled Jason to one side and said, look, I've heard this information, no idea if it's true, I just wanted to let you know, and you can do whatever you want with it, but I wanted to make sure I was being a good friend to you, but I don't know if this is true. Shane Dawson was gossiping, absolute bullshit, by the way, tell it, Gabby, that information, but he's such a fucking mean girl, I swear to God. Anyway, so, Gabby already, before anything else had happened, had inserted herself into someone else's relationship, which Trisha is allowed to be pissed off that... Gabby turned around and told Jason about what she thought of her sexual health. Gabby was not happy that Trisha was pissed off because she was certain she was in the right. Even if you do the right thing, people can still dislike you for it because they're on the other end of you doing the right thing. Secondly, the problem with that situation was that Gabby knowingly involved someone that had no business knowing anything about Trisha's sexual health. If Trisha wants to tell David Dobrik about her sexual health, that's up to Trisha. Gabby involved someone that had no business being involved in that. And again, Trisha was angry at Gabby, understandably, about that. Again, Gabby doesn't understand. I'm not even sure if she has ever contemplated that knowingly telling David by him being in the room while she was openly telling Jason was a bad decision. I'm not actually sure if she's ever apologised for that. Because in the docu-series sort of thing, she sort of glosses over that a lot. After all of that happened, and Trisha found out about it, after all of that happened, I think Trisha might have messaged Gabby or something and said, like, stay the fuck away from me. Basically telling Gabby that she wasn't happy with what she'd done, even though Gabby thought she was in the right for telling Jason. Then... Gabby goes on her Instagram stories and says, she doesn't mention the person by name, she just says, if you knew something, if you knew that a person ha may have a sexually transmitted disease, do you think it's right to tell the person they're dating? And she put it on a poll. I have a genuine question that I want to ask the general public. If somebody tells you that somebody has an STD, an incurable STD, it comes from a close friend of theirs, a source, and then you find out that a friend of yours is sleeping with them, is it wrong of you to say, hey, just so you know, I've heard this, don't know if it's true, but this person told me, talk to them about it, ask about it. Is that fucked up? I'm just genuinely curious. First of all, she wanted validation. What she did was the right thing to do. And 73% or something of her audience agreed with her. I'm 50-50 on it. I can see Gabby's side. I can see Trisha's side. I can see both sides of that argument as to if you find out a piece of information, should you tell the person they're dating? I can understand wanting to tell them. It might be worth just saying, it might be worth just getting yourself checked out. I've heard some information. Get yourself checked, just to be safe. I have no idea whether this is true or not. It may have just been worth saying something like that. But, I mean, it is also up to the people who are dating to know each other's sexual health and to get themselves tested. It's their responsibility to do that. So that's why I'm saying I can definitely see both sides of that situation. Then Gabby also puts a conversation of Gabby's and Trisha's on her Instagram and really shittily blurs the person's photo and name. And the way it was blurred, you could tell if you knew Trisha's profile picture, you could tell it was hers. So she did a really shoddy job of blurring it. She also shared conversation, which was nobody else's fucking business, let's be honest. And still to this day thinks that she was in the right for everything she did through that situation. Trisha then made a whole YouTube video saying that she doesn't trust Gabby Hanna. But basically she told him, 
hey, be careful, Trish has herpes and you're sleeping with her and blah, blah, blah. Gabby, have we slept together? Did I show you my STD results? Have, are you my doctor? Did you swab my vagina? And basically makes a good argument as to why you being the recipient of the person of gossip, which wasn't even true, but whether it was true or not, it doesn't matter. Like Gabby was going around the internet, going around telling all these people. It was nothing to fucking do with them. Just keep some stuff to yourself. It was understandable why Trisha was pissed off and hurt by that. And just side note, can we stop pretending like STDs, especially herpes, isn't super fucking common? This is why getting tested, rubbering up, like being careful with who you're dating, making sure you're all sexually healthy. Why that is so important? But anyway, but that's just me. You know, try not to stigmatize something that is incredibly fucking common. Okay, so then we have the Jesse Smiles incident. Again, don't know what came first. Earlier on, before Gabby was was super super popular, their story times on YouTube. Jesse Smiles and Curtis Lepore were dating at some point. They were both also viners at the time. Then they broke up, and there was a sexual assault. I'm not going to get into it because it's triggering for a lot of people. And I don't want to keep bringing up this super triggering story because I don't think this should be following Jesse around. I definitely think it should be following Curtis around. And at the time, Gabby and Jesse did not really know each other. And Gabby sided, or at least the tweets that she was tweeting at the time seemed to be siding with Curtis. There was also a discussion of after this has happened and after Curtis had admitted to sexually assaulting Jesse, there was a discussion that never came about, but there was screenshots of texts between Gabby and Curtis that Gabby was going to do a collab with Curtis. In the docu-series, Gabby really hones in on the fact that she was not Jesse's friend when all this went down. Everyone harps on about the fact that how could you support your best friend's R word? Trauma that has fucking nothing to do with me. I listened to Curtis when he asked me if he could tell me his side of the story because I knew the true story. Jesse showed me the evidence. She showed me the text messages. I heard her side of events. And if he was going to try to say something that wasn't true, I was going to call him the fuck out on it. I also listened to Curtis because he's a human being. And just like in real court, in the court of public opinion, if you're going to judge and condemn somebody, you should at least hear them out. It doesn't mean you have to like them. It doesn't mean you have to believe them. It doesn't mean anything other than everybody has a voice and everybody deserves to be heard. Gabby hones in on the fact that she didn't know Jesse at the time, but you still supported a known and admitted R word. You lied. He didn't call you. You hung out with Curtis's friends. Curtis was there. This is what you told me. He pulled you to the side and he told you that. He told you, I'm so sorry I was mean to you. I can't believe what Jesse did to you. Trying to get on your side. That, that part's true, but it happened in person. And the reason why I remember it happened in person is because you told me I'm getting like really worked up and really fucking annoyed. I'm sorry. Gabby told me when I communicated to her, this was after we had stopped being friends, but even though we had stopped being friends, one of the things that I believe you never do, even if you hate someone now, is hang out with their rapist and his friends. So I was hurt and I told Gabby, Gabby, this is fucked up. Like I'm really hurt. And she defended herself when all of this happened. And she said, I was hanging out with his friends. I wasn't hanging out with him. He just so happened to be there. And he pulled me to the side. I didn't intend to talk to him, whatever. And I communicated with her and told her how much that hurt me. That was the point where she told me something like I will literally never fucking forget. Cause I cannot believe like till this day that she would say something like this. She said, Jesse, Curtis's friends didn't rape you. What the fuck do I say to that? Like that was everyone's problem. They didn't give two flying fucks that she wasn't Jesse's friend. People cared about the fact that she was supporting someone who admitted to such a heinous fucking act. Again, it showed her character. In 2019, from what I remember, there was some sort of tweets going around where Gabby was trying to say that this never happened, that someone I'm mutuals with on Twitter, which I'm not going to show the Twitter handle because I don't want them to consistently be like harassed for this bullshit. I'm just not gonna include that. But what I will say is that this person tweeted at Gabby and said that they know there was some sort of mention of a collaboration somewhere, but they couldn't find the tweets or the video or whatever it was. Gabby slid into this person's DMs and sent them message after message after message after me like so much word vomit. Be I am so sorry. Would you like me to make a public tweet taking back what I said? I ran with something on what I thought was solid evidence and backed up by my memory and I simply just ran on emotion. And Gabby says, I mean, yeah, you can totally say you looked into it and realized it was based on nothing or whatever it is you wanna say, but I think the damage has definitely been done. Gabby did not know this person, 
told them intimate details about Jesse, about Jesse's life, about medication Jesse was on. Nothing that had anything to do with any of the conversation. All that was was to try and make that fan of both of theirs at the time side with Gabby. And what worried a lot of people when all this came out was how many fucking people has Gabby done this to? How many people has Gabby slid into their DMs and given them information, not just maybe about Jesse, but about anyone else she's ever known, just so that they would side with her because Gabby doesn't like people disliking her. Because Gabby cannot handle any form of criticism, negativity. She is, in my opinion, she is too sensitive for this kind of platform. And that's okay. I think recognising when you are too sensitive for things, when you are affected by negativity is important because then you can deal with how that affects the rest of your life. Gabby has so many other possible things, other ventures that she could venture into, but instead she continues to go back to a platform that she has so much negativity on because of her own behaviour. But again, Gabby doesn't see it as her own behaviour, she sees it as people attacking her because she doesn't take responsibility for her own actions in any of these situations and we are not even halfway through. Okay, so this one I'm just going to go through really quickly. This is when Gabby thought she was shadow banned. So I can't recall if she was or she wasn't. I remember there was a video of someone searching for her name and she wasn't shadow banned whatsoever. I remember because I did make a video when PewDiePie was genuinely shadow banned because you searched for his YouTube channel. He's a huge YouTuber. You searched for his YouTube and there was nothing. And then about two days later it got fixed, you found his channel and his videos. His channel doesn't come up. His content doesn't come up. And Gabby believed she had been affected in a similar way because her videos were not getting recommended or put in trending or, or she wasn't getting like the same amount of views and subscribers that she used to. YouTube has shadow banned my channel, meaning they will not recommend my videos. They will not show you mine and up next. They've completely hid my channel and will not serve my content and my music, but will push the narrative and the false accusations of stuff that people literally made up. But Gabby did not take responsibility for the fact that the reason that she became a huge YouTuber is because she used to make story times all the time. And then she changed up her content because she wanted to do her own music, which is absolutely fine. But then if, say for instance, 4 million people have subscribed for your story time videos and then you go and you completely change up your content and maybe they'll say subscribe to you but they just aren't interested in that video, you can't be offended consistently by that. You can't cry wolf every time that happens. And this was after all of these, or at least a lot of these anyway, dramas had happened. So people's excitement for supporting her new music etc, it likely wasn't as heightened as it was with her first or second music video because they'd seen a different side of her and again like there was no sort of reflection of her own actions affecting the way her audience was seeing her now. And don't forget as well like she'd been on YouTube for like what 10 years or something by that point. Her audience may have grown up and been like do you know what this person really isn't for me. Like again she used to do story times, I'm not really into story times anymore, her new content I'm not really into it. And therefore they may have stopped watching or unsubscribed. Some people just stop, completely stop watching and just leave their subscribe on still. They'll just see what's in the subscriber feed and they'll just watch what actually intrigues and interests them. You have to take some responsibility for the fact that your new content just may not be for everyone. Like for example, I put out a community post just recently saying that I'd just finished 15 seasons of Supernatural. Would anyone be interested in my breaking down of the characters and uh, some of the endings, some of the highs and lows of the series, etc. I guarantee a lot of my subscribers are not going to be interested in that because they subscribe to my commentary. If I want to do that video because there are some people that said they would genuinely watch it, if those people watch it and enjoy it, that's great. If I want to make it because it's something I will truly enjoy and that's what's important. The numbers became incredibly important to Gabby. And don't get me wrong, it's so easy to follow the numbers. It is so easy to get disheartened when one of your videos will get loads and loads and loads of views and the next one will not hit anywhere near that. So I'm just grateful anyone clicks on my video. And if I don't want to make videos because I feel like otherwise I'm just following, okay, what does everyone else want me to do? What do peop other people want me to do? What do other people want me to do? If I'm just constantly doing that for other people's views and not my own enjoyment, not only does it show throughout the video, but it brings no fucking joy to you. All it brings is misery when you follow the numbers. The only other thing I want to mention about this whole shadow ban situation is the fact that 
Gabby, when she wasn't shadow banned anymore, when she stopped thinking she was shadow banned, at the time when she thought she was, she was consistently saying, like, I'm doing this for the, the smaller YouTubers, I'm doing this for everyone else as well. My YouTube representative went to YouTube, it was in front of Susan, was in front of the executives, and has said this is an issue, not just with Gabby, but your top female creators. Do you know she's never ever spoken about it ever again? She didn't even talk about it in her docuseries, that YouTube apparently shadow banned her. Just something to think about because when it's not about her her care for it seems to dwindle okay again i don't know when this video was posted but gabby found herself in a lot of drama when she did a e-girl style video and when she was scrolling down on the website page there was mention of a deceased teenager if was this age, this would be me. 100% so. For sure. This outfit right here is you already straight wear. up what I wore from seventh grade to college. And now. And now. <laughs> I do have that shirt. Now, I'm not going to say the person's name. I'm not going to. This is incredibly sensitive. And the family have turned around and said that they do not want to keep being involved in this. So I'm not going to mention the person's name. I'm not going to show extracts from it or whatever. I'm just going to say that Gabby accidentally included it. And I genuinely believe it was an accident. Okay? I don't think she did this maliciously. I don't think she read the article. Do I think that was an oversight? 100%. 100 million percent. Okay? Quick scan of it. That article would have told you. Okay, maybe this isn't the article to include. I could just clip this bit out. It could have been easily done. People saw it. Were triggered by it. Tweeted at Gabby or like mentioned in the comments to Gabby about it or something. And Gabby went in blurred the image, went about a day. Now, a lot of people saw that as she was trying to sneakily go in and, you know, not bring any more attention to the drama. I feel like that's yes and no. I feel like maybe from all the other situations she'd been in, she was trying to maybe, you know, maybe put this one under the rug a little bit. But also, considering the context of what she was hiding in that video, maybe she was also um, giving Gabby the benefit of the doubt Maybe she didn't want to keep bringing more attention to a subject that was incredibly sensitive and that was going to affect all the other people, all the family and friends that knew this person, giving ben Gabby the benefit. A lot of people called for a video to apologise for doing this um, and to take the original video down. I can't remember if she did or not take the video down, but I know that she did make her an apology and the apology was really good. Everyone agreed that the way she apologised, what was an accident, everyone sort of went on with their lives. Until the docuseries where she threw around insults at everybody and brought up a situation again. To me, is infuriating. All I did was scroll through an article on a YouTube video that happened to have a picture of a girl who was murdered. I, that is what I did. That was my crime. I'm addressing the drama channels directly. You used the murder of a child to exploit me. And that is disgusting. Went with that story and exploited a murdered teenager to the point that her dead body, the photos of her dead body that were taken by her murderer and posted on the internet were being sent to her fucking mother and sister. You did that, not me. She has said that she was harmed by you, that you exploited her daughter. And you have not apologized. And I have? You know, it was a horrible situation for them and they didn't want to keep reliving it. I will get into the docuseries right near the end. Now we're going to talk about Gabby Hanna taking criticism for any of her poetry. Rachel Oates made two videos about Gabby Hanna's poetry books. One, well, actually, I think she made multiple about the first one, but that's because she's incredibly... I don't think she was following views. She makes multiple videos about a lot of different books. And she was being incredibly in depth with her review of this book. The minute you start trying to sell your stuff to other people, you know, it's pretty open to criticism. If I have paid money for your book, I feel I can critique it if it doesn't live up to what I expected. That poetry is completely subjective. While we can analyse it and say this is a good poem, this is a bad poem, they're kind of only from kind of technical perspectives. What you like and don't like is completely up to you and there's no right and wrong there at all. This video is just my opinion and my analysis, analysis based on what I do like and don't like in poetry. 
it is purely my opinion. Gabby wanted, again, praise, recognition, support from anyone and everyone. And I don't think she appreciated the criticism and critiques that Rachel was giving her, even if they were really, really good. Especially in the illustration, I'm so proud of my artwork. I'm so blown away by myself and my growth, and I'm so excited to share that with you. So to show that people will have differing opinions, and just because you like something that someone doesn't like, or you don't like something that someone does like, doesn't make it inherently good or bad. That is what art is, it's subjective. It's a matter of preference, and that's art, baby! So Gabby has said that in some Instagram stories later down the line, which again, I'm going to get to in a bit. She has said that why would she take any criticism from her when she's never written anything, basically. She would rather take criticism from people who write reviews or something, which like already is incredibly contradictory because anyone that writes a review of your book does not need to have any credentials to do it. They don't need to be a book reviewer. They don't need to be a poetry reviewer. Anyone can review anything on the internet. If you buy an appliance and you say that, oh my God, it's really good because it's easy to use. Another person doesn't like it because they find it complicated to use. Each person can have their own experience and say their review. Similar to if you go to a hotel or a restaurant or you don't need to be a food critic to review and say, do you know what, I had really bad service and I personally didn't really like the food because it was cold or I was waiting too long. Everyone can review anything. Whether you want to take on that criticism to try and better yourself is completely up to you. You cannot get everyone to like everything. Every single person has different tastes. Like people have different fashion sense and tastes of food and people like different holiday destinations. Everybody is so different. Nobody is going to like everything everyone else likes. There isn't a single thing. People like different actors and actresses and Everyone is entitled to their own opinion and Rachel gave her opinion with criticisms because she is incredibly intelligent. I think she was incredibly polite and sensitive to the way she was talking. From what it seems, Gabby doesn't ever watch the videos that people make about her criticism, whether it was Trisha talking about the whole herpes gate thing whether it is Rachel criticising her book. It seems like her fans send her little tiny 10, 20 second clips out of context and then Gabby makes a snap decision on that. And that is something that I think Gabby needs to stop doing. If she can't take any criticism from people, if she isn't going to take the time to listen to them, then she shouldn't react to it. Like for example, Rachel, oh, she didn't even need to say anything about it. She never needed to interact with Rachel ever. But what did she do after all of that happened? And she wasn't actually happy with the way that Rachel critiqued her because she, like I say, she says about this a couple of years later. She sent her another book. She sent her Dandelion, her second poetry book, after she'd already critiqued her first one and Rachel critiqued her second one and Gabby didn't like it. But if you didn't think she had credentials enough to review your first one, why the fuck did you send her the second one? Is it just because you thought, oh, okay, so I've sent her the second one, so therefore there is no way she's not going to say something positive to me because I've gone out of my way to look like the bigger person. So therefore she has to show that she likes me. She has to give me good publicity for this. It's possibly something she may have thought. Okay, so next is around Patreon. So if you don't know, Patreon's a site that you can, like, people can set up and then you can pay to have more personalised experiences with creators that like whether it's from Twitch or YouTube or whatever. You'll see limited viewership videos that aren't on the main channel and things like that. So Gabby had a Patreon and people had certain tiers. So I don't recall what the tiers were, but some people were paying for specific tiers where they get to have, was it access to Discord or something? I can't remember. But whatever it was, they'd paid for a specific tier to get certain access to specific things and they were not getting those things that they had paid for. So they ended up setting up their own Discord and these people, who majority of them were underage, by the way, so these were young people, and they went into this Discord to say they, they weren't happy with this Patreon, basically, because of X, Y, and Z. And they set up a document to say that much. Now, I don't know if someone leaked it to Gabby or if they sent it to her before they sent it to Patreon. I can't remember what happened, but either way, Gabby inserted herself into this, into this Discord that was completely separate from her personal Discord and harassed these people. People. Hey guys, I just wanted to give you a heads up about the lawsuit. And this member of the Discord is obviously shocked. Then she follows up with, for those under 18, your parents will be contacted. Then this member of the Discord says, a person with a big ass following scaring kids, 
Really? It's not about scaring, guys. It's slander. I know this is fun and games for you, but it's my life. And now you've published it publicly. She's referring to the Google Doc that was posted in her Discord server. This is an online chat, honey. We know the law, ma'am. It's not slander at all if I have proof. All we did was explain our experience on a private Discord that hasn't been posted publicly on any other platform. Then Gabby says, if you publish to the internet, it's publishing. Then another member says, also, like you want people to think you're a good person, but then act like that. Now, I will mention that this is when she was apparently not mentally well, but she tried to manipulate them into signing an NDA to say they'd never speak badly about her. She was trying to say that she already had their addresses and all this sort of stuff. Like it was, it was bad. Again, to me, this seems like another situation where she could not deal with people disliking her. She could not deal with people turning around and saying that their experience with her was not a good experience. It is, seems to be a consistent pattern with her because the next thing I want to talk about is her attacking fucking, I want to say everyone, but it wasn't quite everyone, Rachel Oates, Oscar Wilde, Dominic DeAngelis, Angelica Oles, and I'm sure there was others as well, on her Instagram. She attacked Rachel Oates. Hey, Rachel, instead of hopping in my DMs trying to bully and gaslight me from your own abuse, you could just apologize. I know that if I did anything like this, I would be called manipulative, sociopathic, narcissistic, attention hungry, money hungry, but that is what you are. What you did was bully and harass me for months, and then when you got called out of it, got super defensive. Like, you literally just ran away and blocked me instead of looking at your own criticism. You can't take criticism towards yourself at all. I've still never blocked you after all of the harassment. You can't stand even the ounce, tiniest ounce of criticism. You're a fucking monster. You're a bitch. She called a lot of these people narcissistic abusers because apparently she'd probably just learned that in a therapy session or something. And she called her small for having only 4,000 views on one of her YouTube videos, even though it was out of the norm of what her normal content was, even though Gabby had like a separate channel where she'd said that trying to put someone down for having low views is like really scummy. Relevant that, dude, that's the meanest thing you can call someone. I think irrelevant because at its very core, you're saying this is all you're worth is these numbers. And without that, you're irrelevant. You mean miss 4K views on your fucking uh, makeup tutorial? Miss 4K views on your commentary piece a week ago? Yeah, I just went and checked. I'm talking about you for attention. You talk about me, you get millions. Like incredibly hypocritical, but I mean, we're seeing a pattern of this. She called out Dominic DeAngelis. Next up to bat is Dominic DeAngelis. He had to come at me on Twitter, said that I was the uh, worst person he's ever met in LA. So let me tell you about the day I met him. So before I met him, he played a game of Smash or Pass publicly on YouTube. And when my picture came up, he de me and demeaned me you know like a misogynistic disgusting piece of shit who acts as if he could have a chance with me anyway so at a party he approached me like nothing was wrong and i confronted him about it and i said i didn't like that and he was like oh come on this games and i said well you're too short for me to fuck how do you like being judged on your physical appearance and then he stormed off and didn't like me anymore you fucking nasty piece of shit when all he said was she wasn't his type. Pass, why would you pass on Gabby? That's not my type, man, shit. Uh, even though when she met him at a party and videoed their interaction, she called him short and tried to minimize him, and again saying that no one knows who the fuck you are. So you passed me. I did. So you mean to tell me that if tonight we got a little bit drunk, and I was like, hey, I'm really interested in you. You think you're out of my league? I don't say you're out of my league. No. Honestly, I'll do anything when I'm drunk. Just when you're drunk? No. Is it the fact that I'm three inches taller than you? Is that the reason you're a little intimidated? Is that yeah. why you're going fast? Yeah. So I think we all know that if Dom had a chance to fuck, Dom would fuck. Dom would fuck. Dom would fuck. Yo, it's fine. Nobody on my blog channel knows who you are. Angelica Oles came to Rachel Oates' defense and again, Gabby went on the attack. Hey, I'm on Angelica Oles. And uh, the mother asked for an apology from Angelica. She called called her out specifically and said that she felt exploited by Angelica and uh, the other drama channels too that I literally can't remember most of their names. I remember Angelica because she started it. It's not a woman thing. She's on Twitter right now saying that I'm sexist. Oscar Wilde liked a tweet 
the way Oscar read it was that considering he's had issues with sobriety, he saw it as something related to that because that is a something triggering in his life. And Gabby messaged him and said, basically, how dare you like a tweet that was about her? She wanted him to revoke in liking a fucking tweet. And then when he refused to do it, she minutely tagged him while driving and, and filming herself during all these videos, by the way. I'm not going to blast the person because he didn't do it publicly and he's clearly just like nervous. And he DM'd me and he was like, hey, I don't want any problems. It seems like you're going through it. Um, just so you know, I'm here to chat. It's an open door if you're not okay. So then I responded and I held him accountable to his portion of it. And I was like, yeah, like you contributed to an ongoing hate train. And then uh, he snapped on me and blocked me. So he didn't actually want to be a listening ear. He actually wasn't offering support. It was performative. All of these people are fake. Nobody actually cares about humanity. Gabby, no. I like Nick's tweet because it spoke of growing with your audience, which I've firmly done in the past three and a half plus years of being sober and the people that have been with me. Um, yeah. I, why you say you, you go on your Instagram and then you say you're not going to mention me and then tinyly like mentioned my name in the bottom corner which i don't know what attention you want um it's you're not gonna get anything that um i'm drama seeking right i started drama i just want attention ah! because oscar wilde uh neglected to include a very large part of the story which was he involved himself in my life and my situation and publicly liked it degrading me then went out of his way to message me saying that he didn't know what was going on and offer friendship and then when he was being held accountable to his own action he blocked me this isn't going to work on him though Why not? <laughs> which was incredibly dangerous so she attacked literally attacked all of these fucking people if she wasn't happy with the way rachel would made multiple videos of her poetry there was much better adult ways to defend herself rather than consistently just going on the attack. People would have been more likely to listen to her if she hadn't have gone about it in this way. And also embellishing what people did. Like I said, calling someone a narcissistic abuser when they're clearly fucking not narcissistic abuser. They literally just gave you criticism on a book especially one that you actually sent them as well. Saying someone had, had spoken shit about you in the Yasa past when literally they said you aren't their fucking type. Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, I don't think that Gabby can deal with any sort of negativity or criticism around her at all. I think that in her eyes, people should only be supportive. People should only be kind, even though she consistently attacks people. Okay, so we're also now going to talk about the docu-series. I don't know where to fucking start. Gabby had been, while this whole attack, on Instagram was going on. Oh, and there was a whole BuzzFeed article as well I forgot to mention. Gabby made a whole docu-series because she was apparently leaving YouTube and therefore she didn't want to leave without saying her piece on a lot of these situations. Now, the first one was around Trisha. She showed the uncut version of her podcast because apparently she cut parts to make Trisha look better, which listening to the whole thing at the time, I was like, this still just looks like you trauma dumped for like an hour. Talk about anything the fuck you want. Okay. Right yeah. Like, I don't know. I mean, I, there's so, there's just so much. My head has been so discombobulated yeah. with How stuff. How are you but... feeling? Like what's up with um, life right now? It came up in a situation. Yeah. Regardless, I... I never wanted to hurt you, but I did. Do totally understand where you're coming from because if I was on the receiving end of that, I would be like, why the fuck are you saying I have herpes? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I and then didn't take into consideration anything that Trisha was saying to you. And again, still didn't take responsibility of the fact that you did something that could make someone upset, whether you think it was for the right reasons or not. You still did it. I mean, doing it in front of someone else, still wrong. Trisha was allowed to be hurt and angry about that. Like I said, a lot of people agreed with the rice gum situation, although possible embellishments and i only say that because like i say it was so easy for her to embellish dominic d'angelis's discussion around her and the smash or pass it's very easy for her to just lie not saying she was lying about being assaulted and him, him throwing her phone and all that sort of stuff I'm not saying that whatsoever i'm just saying that but i just don't know if everything she said at the time i just remember drama channels or whoever it was turn around saying that there's these certain things she said just these little things that just didn't make sense or tie up or something she again attacked jesse and she released the three hour phone call that they had together i know that you know this mm -hmm. when that story dropped every single person 
was saying that you lied. So Are you kidding me? Is that your justification? Which, by the way, just made Gabby look like crap um, because she admitted to listening to Curtis and his side of the story, even though he'd already admitted to essaying her. So it, it doesn't fucking matter what he was going to say. Um, and then we had the escape the night situation. The only reason I want to go into the situation just a tiny bit is just because we haven't really covered this yet. Escape the Night was a YouTube series. Um, it was quite big. Uh, Gabby had been on it in season like two or whatever and she was brought back for season four because they wanted to do like a, you know, bring back a bunch of the cast or whatever. Gabby turned around in her docuseries and said that people with shit talked her and that they made her life difficult on the set. So she made their life difficult, basically. That's the kindest way I can put it. Because she said that she was allergic to certain metal and that her dress didn't fit and they didn't have the right foods and all this sort of stuff. And because of that and all of the consistent weighing around, her schedule being fucked around all the time, she got irritated, she blew up at people on the set. She wasn't happy with the way that Daniel Prader and Joey Graceffa had spoken about her from that situation. And apparently this wasn't the full extent of which she could have talked about her. Someone commented and said, we all knew this about Gabby. I'm glad someone finally said something. And he said, oh, I could say much more, but what's the point? Only one out of all four seasons, someone like had an issue with dying. <laughs> oh, there was one in season four too. Really? Sure. Yeah, that was, <sighs> season four was my least favorite to film by far. Why? Just because Drama. of this one person on the cast who just made it hell. Really? Mm -hmm. And how do you stay out of like not talking about drama? You never talk about things. I would call people out left, right, I don't and center. Know. Honestly, I, 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 I could have, and I could have like exposed a lot of receipts. But yeah. I don't know. I just I guess I don't put out that energy. Even though Smoky Glow said this when she reviewed this series, and she said that she was lucky none of this came out at the time. The only reason people ended up talking about this situation is because Gabby brought it up herself. When Daniel Prader turned around in a video saying that Gabby was a nightmare on set, but she created a beautiful piece, so they basically just got over it. That Joe Graceffa just said there was someone difficult on season four, and therefore they got killed off. Never named her. It became apparent, at least in, I think in that episode, that people were not allowed to say their experience with her if it was negative out loud. Because again, it would garner people disliking her, whether it was them disliking her because she mentioned in that video that she'd apologised to them, they'd apparently accepted her apology and then retracted her, retracted their acceptance of the apology. She didn't appreciate that basically. Just because we were friends before that doesn't contractually make me obligated to never say anything bad about you or never not be your friend because we were friends in the past. You did this. You ended our friendship, not me. In this situation it seemed like Gabby just could not accept that people did not like the way that she handled herself, did not like the way that she treated others, understandably so. And she felt like the victim when, again, she was the aggressor in this situation. Because what happened was she missed two out of the three of her fittings. Gabby, is, this is March 8th. This is three days before filming. Do you know how difficult those days before filming is? Everybody's stressed, everybody's freaking, it is crunch time. The way wardrobe works, it is done weeks before the show is supposed to start, not days. Gabby is officially on the shit list. Not only did she make <laughs> who is nine months pregnant, drive all the way to her studio in Porter Ranch today at 5 p.m., but she legit left early and isn't available all night to get fitted. That's why her costume didn't fit. The metal that Daniel said that if it was affecting her, she could have said on the day, but those requirements were not provided at the you're meant to fill in all this information. Every single person is sent a form days before we start filming to get people's medical information and their allergies and any food restrictions. Gabby didn't fill this out until the day we were on set. Miss Gabby, can we do a little BTS? Of course. How is course, she? Darling. Look at, she's got her yellow hair on. We're doing that. She's practicing her script. <laughs> Filling out my medical information. <laughs> You're supposed to fill this out beforehand so we can get everything prepared and make sure that we have your, your dietary restrictions accounted for. So I don't understand how you expect things to be done for you when you don't do the work. You're and she didn't bother to do it. So she didn't do the work. So how the fuck were they meant to know, basically? Her dietary requirements didn't provide them and then treated the on-screen producer, but treated him like a, her fucking assistant. He had to make her meals every single day so that she was apparently happy, or at least happier on set. Here's a pic of the salads that I made at Whole Foods. Disregard the pizza here. 
I was hungry, so I got a little snack, but you can see I made her salads, I got her grape leaves, I got her a bunch of hummus packs, I got her some chicken and rice on the sides, and that is something that I did daily while she was on set. And guess what, I brought those to set, maybe one was eaten. And she wasn't happy that she was having to wait around constantly, but that is set life. If you guys have ever worked on a set before, it's a lot of hurry up and wait. Hurry up, get to set, oh wait, we're not ready for you, go back, sit down. This is how it works. Unless you're Meryl Streep, unless you're an A-list actor, unless you have an Oscar or a Grammy, which I don't believe Gabby has either, there's no, oh, you're gonna come to set, you're only gonna film for an hour, and then you're going home. A lot of people have said that that is literally just being on a set, and she couldn't deal with it. Something that made me laugh after all of this happened, there was a discussion on Graham Norton between Stanley Tucci and Kate Winslet. Stanley, do you remember how much you complained when we worked together? He would come into work and he would say, after breakfast, half an hour later, he'd say, I'm, I mean, I'm starving. I mean, there's there is nothing to eat. <laughs> and then the next day, he came into work carrying this very sort of neat and tidy little cooler bag. Actually, it was quite a large cooler bag, to be fair. <laughs> and it was full of these perfectly prepared little Tupperwares full of incredible delights. And everyone's like, oh, leaning in. Oh, Stanley. He's like, no. <laughs> and Kate Winslet said that Stanley Tucci would bring food from home in little packed lunch boxes, basically, to have. And it was like, I'm sorry. So St Stanley Tucci, huge actor, massive actor, incredible actor, can make the time and effort to make his own meals. But Gabby didn't want to do it. Gabby didn't want to take responsibility for the fact that, okay, so the first day, there's nothing here that really is going to help me in my diet. Okay, I'll make sure to bring something with me this time. Okay, rather than me sitting here consistently bored, I'll bring my laptop and I'll work, or I'll do editing, or I can read a book, or I can watch a movie, or do you know what I mean? Like, I'm literally getting paid to sit there and do fucking nothing for hours and hours and hours, but I'm going to complain about it. Like, I don't understand that. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love being busy when I'm working. I can't stand sitting there doing fucking nothing. But you're literally being paid a shitload of money to sit there and do fucking nothing. But she was consistently saying that it was like they need to basically work around her schedule and everything. And it was a complete ego diva trip. When she blew up at people, she, I'm pretty sure, called one of the like runners or whatever on the set a cunt. Swearing at anyone because you're frustrated in that way. I mean, I, as you probably noticed, <laughs> I use swear words a lot. But if I was to say you fucking cunt, like to someone in a very aggressive way, especially someone I've worked with on a production or in work in general, I would 100% be in the wrong. Doesn't matter if I'm hangry, doesn't matter if I've been waiting around all day, doesn't matter if I'm frustrated, I've got other projects that I can't fucking do. I'm paid to be there, be paid and shut the fuck up and deal with it. That's the situation that people were saying that she was a nightmare for because she was being difficult in multiple different ways. She is, the only reason anyone even knows about this is because she brought it up herself. And after all that happened, she basically deleted or privated like majority of her videos. There was a um, like red table talk. I can't be asked to go into it. Basically, her and Perez Hilton went on table talk and talked about cancel culture. Basically, it was just pot kettle black constantly because they were both just as bad as each other, and they didn't really have anyone unbiased who knew both of the situations to really. Okay, so about seven eight months ago, Gabby was making a lot of scary. TikToks. So recently, Gabby's posted over 100 videos on TikTok, and it's very clear that she's having a manic episode. <laughs> hmm, hmm, collectively, collectively. Look what the internet did collectively to hate a fucking woman for no fucking reason other than fun. Look what we are capable of, collectively, if we would remember we, instead of always fucking attacking she. God. 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 He parted us like the fucking sea. And now he sees red. He sees red. She. What if I read the right literature? What if I followed the rules? What if I was diligent and consistent and brave? What if I chose? What if I chose? What if the second coming was the person brave enough to choose? The person who took the hard work and dedication 
to sacrifice themselves in case it fucking worked. Believe me or don't. A lot of people were really worried for her. Don't know if she was, but she seemed, her, her actions appeared manic. And people were worried that she would be harmful to herself and therefore people were phoning the police to so she would get healthcare checks. She lets a complete stranger into her home. Oh, hi. 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 Do you use your bathroom? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Come on. Thank you. Hey, there's mine. Oh, What's your name? My name is Nick. Nick? Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Right there. Is right okay. here? Right there. By the way, Nick? Yes. I know you know who I am. Come on. Why did you lie to me this whole time? Why what did you this? lie to me? That's for my acne, you dumb cunt. Get the fuck out of my house. Now. 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 He was like wandering around her home and videoing it and it was complete security risk for her. She didn't even really know. When she seemed to appear like she was coming out of this manic state, she explained that she had eaten edibles and when she eats edibles, she has these really bad reactions to it. Oh my God, it was the edibles. I didn't even think about it until somebody commented that the kid who fucking lied his way into my house filmed edibles. Like somebody commented, oh, didn't they show edibles on the floor? And there were on that floor right there. I had a green plate and on it was my bowl, weed, and a bag of edibles. A long time ago on my YouTube channel, I told the story of why I don't fuck with edibles and it's because I hallucinate on them. I had only tried them a couple times. One time somebody gave me a brownie and I literally saw people's auras and it was like this crazy intense experience. And then the other time I accidentally ate some chocolate not knowing it was edibles at a party and then somebody was like, that's edibles. And I was like, I'm gonna go home. And then I literally saw the fucking Grim Reaper in my bed for real. Like, I literally said that. But over the years, people always recommend edibles to me, and I always said no because I hallucinate. But I had a few packages of gifts that some were gummies and some were Wally drops, which were like these um, hard candies, right? So the past couple weeks, I was like, I have these fucking edibles. Like, let me fucking try them because my throat was hurting from smoking and I was just looking to do something other than smoking, right? That's where the fucking difference happened because life changed for sure i was having some different ass fucking experiences for sure oh my god dude hold on bro for those who have a negative reaction to edibles the symptoms can include a racing heart excessive sweating anxiety paranoia hallucinations and delusions they can cause people to freak out clearly edibles have a more severe toxicity than inhaled forms and the effects are psychiatric in nature and i knew that bro i literally knew that i told stories on youtube about it bro during the manic episode she said a lot of she said some very transphobic comments i'm gonna give you some of mama's tough love right now i want you to know that i'm here for you always i will accept you through your journey no matter what the choice is always yours to be happy but I'm telling you right now that if you learn to love yourself, please, baby, please love yourself because I love you. No false idols. I am your mother. Love your body. Love what God gave you. It's fun. Every sick thought you have explored. Is this safe? Is this sane? Yes, baby. You are safe and you are sane. You are confused. And I'm here to help you and show you if you please, because I love you. And if not, I love you anyway for fucking ever and ever and ever and ever for, for, for ever. She said some very racist comments. Hey, you know why black people are inherently so much cooler than white people? Because they were raised with Jesus, mostly. They were told to respect their mom. So, black women especially naturally embody the Holy Spirit because black mothers are always left to raise their babies alone when the father leaves. It's almost like the mothers depended on God to get them through. And that white man were like, uh-oh, black people are powerful. That's scary. And instead of saying, hey, black people, hey, Native American Indians, 
You guys seem to be really peaceful and happy on your land. We just came here on this boat because we didn't like our homeland. So now we're here in yours. It's ours now, baby. And she tries to explain it away. But it didn't start that way. It started with me doing some spoken word poetry and trying to talk about things that I care about, which are homelessness and dying children and the environment. And Again, rather than just turning around and saying, I don't know what the fuck I was saying. I am so sorry if I offended anyone. I would never ever want you to think poorly of me. I would ever think these these things. There's a lot of ways she could have dealt with that situation, but again, she kind of went on defensive because Gabby has this sort of consistent behavior of not ever really truly apologizing unless she thinks that she's gonna get an apology back. If she apologizes, she expects you to apologize back to her, which that's not what apologies are. If you're expecting it to be reciprocated, you're not really sorry for what you've done. You're hoping that they're gonna apologize to you so you can just ignore this ever basically happen and not actually try and better yourself from, from it. From all of these situations, it seems, at least from that video, like I said, right at the start, I think she's isolated herself. Whether it's just from people she knows, from her family, because there has been drama with her family around some of the illustrations in her books. I didn't get into that because I don't really want to bring up the family drama because I don't really know that much about it. But she has r really and truly isolated herself. And that's sad because... It's not nice being isolated, especially when you're struggling with your mental health. It can feel incredibly, it's so hard to just do the small things. It can be so difficult. I really want to say I hope that Gabby can recognize some of her flaws because we've all got flaws. Not a single fucking human being on this earth is perfect. And I, I really hope that she can recognize her flaws and start to genuinely better herself. Not for anyone else, not for f followers or friends or views for herself this is from someone who i'm alone the majority of the time it can be so hard to be alone when you're not happy yourself it is so much harder this is the devil's playground it genuinely is there's a reason why depressed people they need something whether it's a tv show or music or being around other people they have to have something going on so it's not quiet because if it's quiet the worst possible things go around in your mind and we are our worst critics i hope things get better i hope things are not manic i hope things are healthy i did see a tiktok where she had like a heart monitor on um so i hope her health is okay i didn't make this video to bash gabby at all was a hindsight of behavior past however many years and how it can affect people mentally can be incredibly draining i hope this was insightful i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did make sure to give this a like and subscribe if you feel like it i'd really appreciate it like i said next video i'm hoping to do is around supernatural and if you guys do like that i'm open to doing more videos around tv shows and even maybe some films because i go to the cinema a lot <laughs> like i do a lot of movie reviews on my instagram so if you want to see just short videos of my like maybe five minute videos or whatever about my thoughts of newer releases as well that's something i'm definitely open to so let me know if that's something you'd enjoy but um yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope to see you all in the next one bye